Hi everyone. In this video, we'll be looking at how to use WooCommerce attribute swatches. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. As part of the Avada WooCommerce Builder released in Avada 7.2, we also added three Avada attribute types to WooCommerce, Avada Color, Avada Image and Avada Button. These attribute types can be used for variable products in both standard WooCommerce layouts, as well as in Avada layouts with the new Woo Add to Cart element. Let's see how this all works together. I've imported the classic shop website here, and for this video I'm going to create a variable product for an Avada t-shirt that has four sizes, three colors, and two available logos. It all starts with the attributes. You can add attributes to a product directly but you can also add global attributes into WooCommerce and then apply them on a product by product basis. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some global attributes. To do this, we head to Products, Attributes. Here you can create global attributes. Remember, these are global so you can add attributes for all your products here, not just for a single product. The advantage of this, of course, is that you only need to create them once and then you can apply them to any products. In this case though, I'm just going to add the attributes I need for the t-shirt. For my example, I need three, color, logo, and size. I'll start by giving the first one a name and a slug, and then choosing the type of attribute. This can be either Avada color, Avada image, or Avada button. A color attribute is useful for products that have different colors, and you can select color swatches when you configure the attribute terms. Avada image is a useful attribute type for any visual differences in attributes. And Avada button is useful for sizes or anything else that works as a simple label. For this one, I'll choose Avada color. I'll just add the other two, the logo, which will use the Avada image attribute type, and size, which will use the Avada button type. Now I have my three attributes in place, I need to configure the attribute terms. These are the specific colors and sizes, etc. for the attribute. If I click on Configure Terms for color, we come to this page. On the left, I can add my individual colors for this attribute. Again, I might only need three colors for this product, but if I had other products with different colors, I could also add them here as well. So I'll add the first one. Let's call it white. Give it a slug. We could give it a description if needed, but I'll skip this. And at the bottom here, we can see the Avada product attribute options. Because this is a color attribute, we have a color picker here. And here I will choose white. Then we just click on add new color. The count up here will eventually show how many products this color is attached to. And we can rearrange the order of items here if we want with these three lines. Okay, I'll just add the other colors and we can move on. Alright, so now we have a range of colors added. Let's now go back to the attributes and add some attribute terms for the other two. I'll click on Configure Terms for the logo attribute, so I can add my two logo options. Note here that instead of a color picker, because this is a Nevada image attribute type, we get an image selector at the bottom to select the image we want for each attribute term. I'll just call this one Avada Logo, give it a slug, and click on Upload Image and add my logo from the Media Library. OK, I'll just add that one and create the second one as well. OK, once more back to the attributes, and finally we will configure the terms for the size attribute. The Avada button attribute type is just a label, so we only need to add some names in here. I'll just quickly add all the size attribute terms and then we can begin to apply these attributes to the product. OK, so let's now move to the actual product. I have my basic product here with just a title, a price, a short description and a featured image added. The first thing to do is make this a variable product by selecting that at the top of the product data panel. Now, if I head to the attributes panel, I can choose from the custom product attributes here. 
In this case, I want all three, but this is listing all the global attributes, and so you could just pick and choose from here. When I add one, in this case color, we can see this panel. Here in the values field, we can click and then select from the attribute terms the values we want to assign to this product. I will add white, blue, and black, and I will leave the red I created off this product. I'll also select the used for variations checkbox, so we can use these values for the variations. OK, I'll save these attributes and add the other two. With these two, I can just select all, and remember to tick the used for variations checkbox. OK, so now our product has the desired attributes and values added. Now we just need to create the variations. Let's have a look at the variations tab. We have a couple of options here. WooCommerce has an automatic option to create variations from all attributes, but if you prefer, you can also add them manually. If I go with the automatic option, this will create the 24 possible product variations from our attributes. Each color has four sizes and two logos, so that's eight variations for each color, and with three colors, that makes 24. Alternatively, I could do this with just six variations, for example, one with each color and logo combination, with the size set to any size. Which way I would do this would depend. If I wanted the ability to put the extra large shirts on sale at some point, we'd need the full product variations. But if that wasn't important, we could do it with just six. That way we could still make the blue shirts on special, for instance, regardless of size. To make a variation manually, we just choose Add Variation from the drop-down and click Go. That creates the variation and then we can just select our options. There's also a default form values option above this if you want to set some default choices for the product. In my case, I'm going to leave this empty, and I'm also going to go with the auto option, so I'll remove this variation as well. And now I'll select create variations from all attributes here on the drop down and click go. Okay, so here are all of our variations, and now we need to add prices and other details to them. At the top right, there's a small link which we can use to expand or close the Variation Details panel. Think of each variation as a separate product, and so different variations can have different prices and completely different product attributes, like sales prices and shipping classes, etc. For this example, I'll just go through and set the price, which as we can see from the notice at the top here is needed for the product to display. And as I go, I will add an image for each variation. I've created six different images to reflect the three colors and two logos, and I will use the same image for all sizes. To add an image, I just need to click on this image thumbnail and choose the right image from the media library. For this first variation, I need an image that shows a black t-shirt with the Avada logo. OK, I'll go and add all the prices and images to these variations here, and I might also add an out of stock notice to one variation to show how that works. All right, so now we have our product variations sorted, and our small white Avada shirt is out of stock. Let's see what we need in our layout to display these. Okay, so the classic shop website was made before the WooCommerce Builder was added, and at this point there are no layouts added. So if I view the t-shirt, we can see WooCommerce natively handles variations like this. It's serviceable, but with the Avada WooCommerce Builder, we can do much better. To jazz up this layout somewhat, I'll head to Layouts from the Avada dashboard. And here I will create a new layout called Single Product. I'll also go to the conditions for this layout and select Products, All Products. That just saves, and now I can close this and add a new content layout section to the layout. I'll just call this one Products, and click on Create New Section. Just note that on a live website, I'd build the layout section before I added it to a layout, because as soon as you add it to a conditional layout, it's live, and at this point the layout section is empty. OK, so now we'd better build it. I'll just click on the Edit icon, and when that loads, I'll just head over to Avada Live as my preferred builder. And for this example, I will use a pre-built content template here to speed things up. I like the look of this one. Product 3, so I'll start with that. I just have to say OK to this dialog. 
and the template loads into the builder. To make sure it previews correctly, I'll go to the sidebar and the layout section options, and on the layout section tab, just make sure we're viewing the dynamic content as a product, and for this example I want to choose the Avada t-shirt product. When there are lots of products you have to search, so I'll type in Avada, and choose this one, and then click the preview button. OK, so that loads and it looks pretty good, but I want to make a couple of quick changes to this layout. I'll edit the Add to Cart element, and on the Variations tab and down a bit, I'll edit the Swatch Active Background Color and make it a light pink here. And I'll add the full background color as the Swatch Active Border Color. That way, when I make a selection, we'll be able to see it clearly. I'll also change the Button Swatch Dimensions to 85 pixels to get this to look better. And I'll also add a clear link, so users can clear their selections. So for the Variation Clear option, I'll choose Inline. For the Clear Content option, I'll choose Text. And in the Clear Text field, I'll add the words Clear Selection. I'll also give that 10 pixels top and bottom margin. OK, that should do. Let's save that Content Layout section, and as it's already attached to a conditional layout, it's live. So finally, let's go and look at the product on the front end to check it's all working as it should be. I'll just refresh this product. And here's our Avada t-shirt. We can see our swatches at the top right, showing us the Avada color variations, the logo variations, and the size variations. If I select a color, and a logo, and a size, we can see the image refreshes itself to show our variation image. From here we can just change logo, or color, and the image refreshes itself again. If I select the white Avada t-shirt in small size, it shows us that it's out of stock, and it won't let us add it to the cart. And if we click the clear selection link, it reverts to default. I think I will choose the black Avada t-shirt in large, and add a couple of them to the cart. Now where's my discount coupon? OK, this concludes our video on how to use WooCommerce Attribute Swatches. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.